Hey guys, I'm in the kitchen again making dinner. So I thought I might come to you with a few tips and tricks um, around making a white sauce alternative that's not going to be involving gluten and your usual dairy. So the recipe I've just selected is, let me show you, using red lentils. So let me just bring it up here. Recently cooked. It is a Thermomix recipe and it's called lentil masaka. So if you can't see that, you can just punch into your cookie do lentil masaka. And basically we make and prepare the tomato lentil um, filling in the bowl, which you can see here. And meanwhile, we steam the eggplants on top. So I've just done that and I've placed the eggplant in and the lentils on top. So then usually we get to this place where it's going to require a white sauce to go on and it's beautiful. It's one of my favorite eggplant recipes. But if you're wanting to get away from refined flours, which is what I encourage, um, if you're going to use a flour of any kind, uh, this is not the brand I usually buy, but it's the brand that you'll probably find in the shop. And that's grab some arrowroot or tapioca and um, you will use less of that than what the recipe calls for. If it says 50 grams of flour, you'll, you only need around about 30 grams of that. And in replacement, you see the recipe talks you through here around step eight, where you're going to put in the butter, the milk and the flour. So in replacement of the butter, we're going to use an oil and that just makes it creamy. So as it um, thickens, it creamies it up. You could leave it out. And then you've got your milk. So of course my trusty go-to milk, which doesn't really flavor it too much, it's quite mild, is the coconut milk. And, um, and that's one way I can create a lovely white sauce. However, I'm gonna give you a different, um, a different version of a, a sauce today, and that's using another vegetable which is what I've got in here. And I've just steamed up a large cauliflower. So cauliflower is great. It's great on keto. It's great vegetarian. It's great um, on the Daniel fast. So for many reasons, you want to grab um, a few cauliflowers in your shop because there's so much you can do with it. So of course we could just, um, we could put a white sauce over the cauliflower and make a cauliflower gratin right now and then we could also rice it up so I could blend it now and make it into a cauliflower rice or or a cauliflower mash so they're just a couple of ideas I'll also use cauliflower for my pizza bases what we're going to do is I'm going to just switch recipes to that water out I'm going to make a cauliflower white sauce so using my collie, which has just been steamed for around 20 minutes, let's pop that back in, just make sure that you've trained it nicely. Now the only difference between a cauliflower mash and the collie sauce is you're going to add a little bit of milk to it. So I've got some oats here. I'm going to show you how I prepare my oat milk, which is very straightforward and simple. If, if you can, avoid store-bought milks on the Daniel Fast, simply because they do usually have a sweetener and other gums. It's better to make it yourself. I'm just going to give that a bit of a, a chop. second blend there just to get it started and now I'm going to make an oat milk so very simply I just use around about what I've got a half a cup of water there half a cup of water to about two tablespoons of oats
love my personal blender when I'm doing small amounts of things. This means I don't have to wash my thermomix and dry it. generally 30-40 seconds for that amount and then we're going to strain so you just want to take the pulp out of it and I only did a half a cup because I knew I had a half a cup left over from the other day when I made some porridge so I'm just going to pour that in and let that strain and it just thins it right out and look, you might be happy to put the fibre in there. Really doesn't matter either way. So we're on the way to making a collie mash. You just put a little bit of salt and some olive oil if we're going to turn that into a mash and that's quite nice too on top like a bit of a gardener's shepherd's pie you could just pop the mash on here if you're wanting to turn it more into a sauce and this is what I really want to achieve is placing some um, some nutritional yeast flakes to give it the cheesiness like the usual white sauce so I'm just going to add to this um, this is optional it's just a tablespoon of our Thermomix veggie stock paste, which is pretty much a flavour enhancer. It's just really salt with a few veggies and a bit of garlic and that flavour through it. And then what I'll use is, I'll start off with a half a cup. So I'll measure in the quarter here. Start off with a half a cup of my milk to make my sauce. And I might need to just add a little bit more. So let's just blend that for about 40 seconds on speed six. Add it to five. Have a look at consistency it really is about personal taste okay yeah that's still way thick tastes good so i'll add the the rest here look I'm, I'm saying for the quantity of cauliflower i've used which is more than one cauliflower i'd probably go up to say a, a cup and a half of milk you're wanting to achieve that sauciness, which pours over the top of this, but is also um, quite um, firm. So a pouring consistency, but a firm, because you're not going, when you bake this, it's not got any eggs or anything to then firm it up further. So how it goes on here is how it pretty much comes back out. So we'll just run with that, because I underestimated the um, quantity of collie and then I'm just going to add around about a quarter of a cup of nutritional yeast flakes. Now people are often scared of nutritional yeast flakes they are an inactive form of yeast so it is usually fine if you um, have issues with candida with that a bit of a blend and it's loaded in B vitamins, so those are my daily Bs right there. All right, let's see how that looks. Now, of course, if you're not on the Daniel Fast and you prefer to put Parmesan in there, I love my Parmesan and only to 
happy to dump it on everything. goodness out there. Okay, as you can see, it's a bit saucier than a mash. Maybe I'm just um, yeah, going to call it a, a hybrid in between a mash and a sauce. I have actually made it quite thin and I've sometimes, yeah, instead of using the oat milk, which is what I just blended up, I could also use a can of coconut cream, but seem to be going through the coconut cream this week so I just wanted to have a bit of a change up. Tastes good. So if you want to make it a little bit pretty, get a bit of a crusty top when you bake this, just add a sprinkle or two. So there's my masaka, lentil masaka using my eggplants. That is one great way I bought two large eggplants this week and I thought now I'm going to make up a couple of dishes um, featuring that so pop that aside and I'll show you what else I'm going to make so with those eggplants slice them up thinly to steam them and add them to the masaka and and I've got some leftover pieces here that I'm going to marinate so I usually just lay them out in a dish like this. Just so that you're able to use a pastry brush and be able to, after five or 10 minutes, turn them over and do the other side. So that's why I do like um, a plate like this. Otherwise, um, when I do my portobello mushrooms, so this is a great marinade for any of your veggies, I often use cauliflower steaks so they're great it's a great bread alternative so to just pan fry um, in a bit of coconut oil or olive oil uh, a couple of collie steaks there's something that I used um, when I was full on doing the keto and keeping the carbs way low without bread they were great and generally I love the portobello mushrooms to do this recipe with as well because they're open and flat and you can actually barbecue them but today these are the leftovers. So just gonna marinate these few veggies as well with the leftover marinade. So the marinade is very basic. It's a couple of tablespoons, I think three actually, three tablespoons of oil. I've done a sprinkle of garlic granules when you just don't feel like peeling another garlic clove. I should have done that this morning when I made my stock. I like the granules because they are quite strong. It gives it, it's a concentrated flavor. And then we want around about two tablespoons of, I'm using tamari. I often use coconut aminos, but I'm out of that at the moment. So tamari. And then I've got just a couple of spices. I'm gonna use a teaspoon of paprika and cumin. So you can pick your own favorites. A little bit of pepper. You won't need salt because you've of course got that tamari, which is um, quite salty as it is. So just mix that, just remind me that when I go shopping, I must pick up a whisk. Mine broke, I threw it out and I've missed it ever since. So there's our little marinade. And you'll laugh, but here's my pastry brush, which a couple of years ago, I couldn't find my pastry brush and I went to the garage and found a clean paint brush <laughs> and it's been in the kitchen ever since. So there you go, just a paint on those. I'm going to probably be a bit short. I should have doubled it for the extra veggies, but that's okay, it gives you an idea. I can make some more later. And, and then I'll just pan fry those. If you've got a barbecue or a Weber, great flavors out on the grill. Or the, um, or the oven bake if you want to just add a little bit more oil to the, the pan. So there, there's some ideas for you using um, the rest of those eggplant. 
And then I also reserved a bit after steaming. They didn't all fit into my bake tray. So I've got these aside for a baba ganoush later. So there's a, a third recipe that you can try out if you haven't done that for a while. So just for those who are sorting through working out recipes and um, you come across some good ones. Look, I basically have this little fella here. Aside from my Thermomix and the recipes on there, these are my great little um, go-to. It's all divided up in categories. So I can just pick out something at any time. There you go, falafel balls. And I've collected these over the years. Of course, you get your favourites. Um, and who keeps recipe books these days? I mean, it's just crazy, isn't it? The amount that you have. There you are, some wraps. So I'd encourage you, if you haven't found yourself some kind of little directory like this, that's a great tip in um, starting your healthy collection of um, recipes, particularly if you're doing the Daniel Fast, you'll be able to um, have a category specifically for your fast. So I hope that's been helpful and you've enjoyed that. You'll have a um, couple of ideas for the coming week. And as I say, buy seasonal and buy what's affordable. Don't be buying anything like a $20 cauliflower if they're $20 this week, which mine weren't, so that was great. I've actually been to Skabiris a couple of weeks in a row bought up and it's done me a couple of weeks which is great when you get good value and it's worth a drive because it is an hour away always love the drive so those of you on the coast who want to head up to Kalnura that's where I get um, a lot of locally grown produce and often in bulk so I got a big thing of oranges um, 10 kilos of potatoes and they'll of course last me for a long time so enjoy your day and sing out if you need any inspiration. Of course, those of you who are doing the Daniel Fast, some of you are day 10, some of you are day 12. Um, I cheer you on. You're doing amazing. And I'm sure you're feeling great as you've just cleaned out and um, lightened, lightened up on the digestive system. And hopefully it's given you some time back to just spend, to meditate and pray. So love you guys. I will talk to you soon.